So let's just really quickly go over kind of the goals I have set up for this um, the session today. The first one is raising awareness with ship workers. A lot of times we don't realize organizations that we might work in or even clients that we have, how ship work can impact their health. And, and we're gonna talk next about the needs, why health coaches are so needed within the ship working community. Um, they have, they are at the top of just about every health risk and we need to be able to be able to better support them. I mean, that's really what as a health coach we really want to do. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is how we our language can be a bit more inclusive. A lot of times the way just the health and wellness industry is set up, it's exclusive for the shift working community. So as health coaches, because we know everybody has the ability to be healthy and we want to support those behavioral healthy ch challenges, um, it's really important that we start um, making sure that our language is inclusive of them. So currently, right now, there is about 25% of Americans are ship working professionals. And this can vary in industry, but, you know, and this number is only growing as we are becoming more and more of a 24, uh, 24 hour um, world. You know, we want our Amazon packages to come next day and we want our doctors available on the off hours when we're generally usually the sickest. All of that requires shift working professionals. So right now we're looking about 25%. Australia is the next one that's really close to us. They have about 20%. Um, they about one in four employees are shift working professionals. So we only see the shift working communities growing and we have to be able to support them. So let's talk about a little bit of where we see shift workers in corporate wellness. A lot of times when I tell people I'm within corporate wellness and I work with shift workers, I get this little, this confused look because they're like, well, you say you work in corporate, but you work with shift workers. And, you know, a lot of times we forget that a lot of our corporations employ shift workers, things like transportation, trucking, you know, think of somebody like Amazon. Amazon employs a lot of shift workers from their transportation to their warehousing, but yet they have big, beautiful corporate offices of, you know, staff that generally works Monday through Friday, nine to five. So these bigger organizations oftentimes will employ a lot of shift workers, but they're left out of the employee wellness um, events and corporate wellness events, which we know have been historically really helpful in um, raising awareness on individuals' health and burnout and things like that. Hospitals are another huge provider of shift workers. Basically, any that one that works in a hospital is generally working a shift lifestyle. So our doctors, our nurses, our surgeons, our janitorial staff, all of this, um, our EMS staff are all you know, shift working professionals. Then manufacturing, that is actually where I got my start. I got my start between manufacturing and transportation. Um, and that's really kind of where I found that this was really something that was needed. Our service providers, weight management, thinking of our garbage folks and our mail people and things like that. And then pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals is another really big one because of their manufacturing facility. Um, so these are all ways that shift workers exist within corporate, but are most of the time left out. You know, one of the things that I first started when I first started working in corporate wellness, and I started realizing shift work was kind of an area that was often missed. I remember I was working at a state transportation agency, and I was talking to their um, HR representative that was running all their health fairs. And I asked them, I said, what are you doing for some of your shift workers, you know, your toll booth workers and things like that? And, you know, they never thought about it. And we ended up putting a plan together and I ended up spending a couple months going from toll plaza to toll plaza and doing some health coaching within their toll booth workers. And that was really cool because that really kind of opened me up to, you know, the feeling that a lot of these employees felt like they were being left out. And having the option of being included was really powerful. And I have to say that was probably one of my top five days as a health coach 
it just, it was an amazing experience. And that's really kind of, I think what started setting this in motion. Now it's interesting when I, t we work about healthy doesn't work for me. And when I first started health coaching, I had this you know, insight that healthy works for everybody. Everybody has the opportunity to be healthy. Then you start learning a little bit of the social determinants of health then realizing, okay, it's not set up for everybody. But I don't think I ever truly believed it until I was in a manufacturing facility. And, you know, I was at the end of the health fair and I had a guy come and sit in my chair and, you know, I tried to start talking to him and he kind of put his hand up and he goes, I don't mean to be rude. He's like, I'm just kind of using your chair, waiting for my friend, you know, healthy doesn't work for me. And that was the first time as a health coach, I was like, well, wait a second. What do you mean healthy doesn't work for you? So over the next 15, 20 minutes, we had this conversation on how things have been set up that exclude the shift workers from feeling like healthy can fit into their lifestyle. You know, simple things like talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, something like that. Those words, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if you're a third shift worker and, you know, your first meal of the day is 6 p.m. and it's dinner with the family, is it breakfast or dinner? You know, a lot of our health information is based off of, oh, in the morning, you know, you want to have a, a good breakfast like oatmeal or eggs. Well, if you're cooking dinner for your family at night, would you rather have scrambled eggs and oatmeal or tacos? So it becomes very confusing and it just, that's where they kind of give up and say, it just doesn't work for me. And that was really kind of the turning point for me was that one sentence of, okay, let's Let's change this. Let's make it so it does work for them. So oftentimes as health coaches, we talk about our lifestyle, you know, um, you know, behavior changes for that lifestyle. But one of the things I noticed when we were talking with a lot of the shift working professionals is that their job, their career dictates their lifestyle. And this wasn't something I ever experienced within the corporate realm. You know, a lot of times if you're talking to somebody and you're talking about, let's talk about good bedtime habits, you know, they can still go to bed around 10, 11, maybe midnight. Um, they could make some behavioral changes to go to bed a little bit earlier, set up a better sleep routine, things like that. But when we're talking about shift working professionals and we're maybe talking somebody that works a second or third shift. And for those of you that don't know, second shift would usually start late in the afternoon and go to early in the morning. And then a third shift is your graveyard, your, you know, start work at 11, you know, 11 p.m., maybe midnight, and you go until early morning. But that's going to dictate. So their career, their job, their schedule dictates when they can go to sleep. A lot of my manufacturing folks, I see the same thing with nurses, they work rotating shifts. So a few days you might be on second shift, then a few days you might be on first shift, and then next week you might be on third shift. And it's constantly changing. So for somebody to try to go to bed the same time every night is clearly impossible. And that's really where I started using, I used to use the word unique lifestyle and then I, it just didn't feel right. And so now I've been really using the term career style because that career is really dictating their lifestyle and how they can manage behavioral changes within that. So let's talk a little bit about the physical health risks, because when you start looking at, you know, the health within our shift working community, they are at the top of every health risk there is. So for a lot of our shift working professionals, they have a 40% higher rate of cardiovascular disease. On average, they get two to four hours less sleep than their non-shift working counterparts. 60% higher rate of diabetes, especially when you are a rotating shift worker, and this is somebody that's constantly rotating. They have a 19% higher rate of cancer, and they have a 30% higher risk of injury due to fatigue. So every time we look at all of this, they're higher on the list, but yet very few corporate health and wellness programs even acknowledge 
shift working within those programs or even design programs that are fit to be inclusive of their shift working community. So this is something, this is really where I want to raise that awareness within these organizations that we need to take a look at this. And, you know, I think a lot of times it's not because somebody doesn't want to know or they don't know what to do. They don't even know it's an issue. You know, like I was talking before about that organization where we went into the toll plazas. When we first started bringing up their shift workers, it wasn't even a thought, you know, and a lot of times it was like, well, how do we reach them? You know, they're not all in a single office building. They can't all get an hour lunch break because that's also kind of unique. You know, in a corporate office, you have lunch and learns. I'm sure some of you have done the lunch and learn sessions. But in a shift working industry, you're only getting 30 minutes of lunch. You know, they don't have time for the lunch and learns. Actually, so many of them don't even have time to eat because by the time they get out of their jumpsuit, depending on what kind of industry they're in, and go to the lunchroom, it might be across campus or across another building. That 30 minutes is drastically dwindled down. And then a lot of them are waiting in line to use a microwave. So it's just not possible for them to have a hearty lunch, given the dynamics of how they're set up. Um, and that's where health coaches really come in because we're creative. We can look at those challenges. We can look at those behaviors and we can figure things out to be a little bit better. You know, so let's talk about some of the confusion that's happening within our shift workers. So let's say our shift worker goes to the doctor. They go to the doctor, maybe their blood sugar is high, maybe their weight is a little bit higher, maybe they're having some cardiovascular issues, and the doctor gives them the advice of eat healthier or move more. You know, so many of our clients have been told this. Now, they go home, they're not really sure what eat healthier or move more means. Because if they ask their wife, their neighbor, their best friend, someone might tell them it's low carb, someone might tell them it's vegan, someone might tell them it's keto, you know, they might be listening to Joe Rogan and they're now on a carnivore kick, right? So it's very confusing for anybody to understand what healthy really is. And then on top of that, you throw in, you know, the dynamics of their work relationship and realize, okay, well, for me to you know, eat vegan might be very difficult if I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to eat at two o'clock in the morning and try to find out what's local for me to grab, right? And then a lot of them might just go to Google and they might Google eat healthier. But even that information is a little confusing. You know, they're saying to eat high, high fiber, starchy carbohydrates, lots of fish, lean proteins, and for someone with little to no nutritional knowledge, this means nothing. You know, and we have here, don't skip breakfast. Well, remember earlier we were talking about a lot of times shift workers, they get, especially those third shift workers, they're confused on if I wake up and my first meal is at 6 p.m., is that breakfast or dinner? Well, don't skip breakfast. Well, does that mean don't skip breakfast as in the first meal of the day? Or don't skip breakfast as in the breakfast I eat with my family before I go to bed. So it's information like this that can become very confusing. And this is where we've realized most of the information is designed on a nine to five Monday through Friday workforce. It's not designed for those that work 12, 14, 16 hour rotating shifts. And this is where as health coaches, we need to be aware of this and we need to change our language to be more inclusive. One of the things that I have realized over the years I've started doing is I no longer say breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We talk about maybe the first meal of the day or the last meal of the day, or maybe our largest meal and our smallest meal, depending on who I'm talking to. Because those terms we use, why they make a lot of sense to me. They make a lot of sense for 75% of the population. But for that 25% of the population who is at the biggest health risks, it makes very little it makes very little sense to them, or they don't know how to use it. 
One of the biggest things is, remember we were talking earlier about some of the common health risks. Well, when we start really drilling down on some of the common health risks and why shift work is so high at risk, a lot of it comes down to one simple factor, and that's our sleep. That's our circadian rhythm. As health coaches, we know this is where the bodies heal. This is where our DNA repairs. This is... This is the most, one of the most important things, if not maybe even the most important thing that our body needs, and they are getting the least of it. I know when I work with shift workers, I generally see them about four hours of sleep a night. Now we know by larger studies that you need seven to nine hours of sleep. Actually, if any of you read the book by Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep, they've actually done a study and they said the amount of people that can sleep less than seven hours a night and not effective productivity is zero. Nobody. They have done it over 10,000 people. They haven't been able to find anybody that can sleep less than seven hours a night and be as productive as somebody, as themselves, that get seven hours or more of sleep. So it's really important. So We know sleep is important for shift workers. So let's go to the CDC recommendations and see what they recommend. Well, the first one is be consistent, go to sleep, go to bed the same time every night. Well, in that first example, we can see how a shift worker, especially a rotating shift worker, might feel like they're left out of the conversation. The first tip is something they cannot do. It's not possible. And actually, in the latest episode of the Shift Health Coach podcast, we actually went through each of these tips and we talked about how a shift worker can implement this into their lifestyle. Now, I'll give you a hint. The first one, they can't be consistent on the same time they go to bed every night. Their career doesn't allow it. And for a lot of them, they love their career. I work with a group of diesel mechanics and A few of the third shift diesel mechanic workers, they wouldn't want to work a day shift. They absolutely love their night shift, but they know it brings challenges. Same thing for our nurses. Our nurses love nursing, but yet we're telling them they have to go to sleep at the same time every night. They can't because their their shifts are rotating, but we can keep a sleep pattern. We can do better where we're creating a sleep environment. We're creating a sleep routine that is consistent, that can help us fall asleep a little bit better. So there are things we can do, but this is a perfect example of why so many people feel like healthy doesn't work for me. You know, when we look at mental health, mental health for the workforce, for anybody in corporate wellness. Actually, real quick, I forgot, we never launched the poll. So go ahead, I have a poll here on if you work in corporate wellness, if you wanna work in corporate wellness. Um, So when we're talking about mental health, for those of us, so we're all here working in corporate wellness, this is great. So for those that, for well, you all who work in corporate wellness, we know, that the mental health is really kind of top of corporate wellness right now. So this past, I think it was a couple weeks ago, Lycra Health uh, released their uh, workforce mental health for 2022. And they ended up finding that the the depression rates at the end of 21 were 25%, the end of 2020 are 23%. So we're obviously seeing it grow. Um, I'm assuming when we get to the end of 2022, it's going to be a little bit higher. But beyond that, when we look at shift versus non-shift, the rate of depression increases 33%. So now, Lycra's health didn't specify if it was shift or non-shift. So I'm assuming probably most of it was non-shift, maybe some shift work in there. Um, But we know the rate of depression within shift workers is even higher. So as important as mental health is within our corporate environment, within our shift working, it's even higher. And this is where we really need as health coaches to begin opening that conversation. I know within the last 18 months in the organizations I've worked through, 
there has been three deaths by suicide in those organizations. Up until 18 months ago, I think maybe in the last eight years, there might have been one or two that I've known about. There could have been more, but I definitely start hearing about it more. Um, and I think the last few that really impacted at a higher level of the the employee workforce. But it's interesting to know. And actually, I have um, – let me show – let me see if I can get um, – Oh, we got a person that loves my Matthew Walker's book. I that is probably one of my favorites. Um, I'm gonna share. Uh, it's on my Facebook page. Um, here, let me throw up my Facebook page. If you guys go on my Facebook page, I have this really cool calculator. I just found out it was created by the National Safety Council and Nationwide, and it actually you can enter in your the size of your organization. Um, the state that the organization is within and how many employees, and it gives you the financial numbers of the impact of the mental health and wellness of their employees. And they also found that for um, a corporation, for any for one dollar they spend, they will actually earn four dollars in return by just employees being more productive, by not losing as many employees. So it really goes to show organizations that if you're serious about the mental health, that implementing a good mental health program or a mental well-being program or any kind of well-being program can be helpful for their employees. So that's a pretty cool tool. Um, for those of you that are in the, um, the national board um, Facebook page, I think I might have posted it there as well. I kind of went a little nuts posting it everywhere because it's the coolest tool I think I've seen in a while. So now that we know all of this and we we see that, you know, shift workers really need us as health coaches to help them, what can we start doing? Well, I like to call what we really need to do practical application. So how can they take all this health information that they're receiving and implement it in their lifestyle? And I think as health coaches, this is really where we have a lot of strength. We are really creative. We are insightful. And more than anything, we have the ability to listen. And I think this is something that most health and wellness professionals miss out on. As health coaches, we are created to listen to our clients, to give them space and hear where their struggles are, and then come up with creative solutions with them to see how it can be implemented. So really, this is the perfect thing that our shift, our shift workers need. We need more health coaches, and we need more corporations to realize how important it is to have support for our shift working professionals. You know, I know we're all in corporate wellness and we know how well corporate wellness has worked. So imagine the impact that we can have when we start taking what we have done in corporate wellness and retrofitting it to what our shift workers need. So what are some of the immediate steps we can do when we get off this call? Well, the first thing I want you to do is those corporate wellness professionals that you talk to, ask them about their shift employees. Find out, do they have shift employees? Do some of your own research. You know, have that conversation about those employees. And then as health coaches, we can offer solutions. I have a few solutions that I offer. One is the free solution of my podcast. Um, but I do offer solutions. I've gone into facilities at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. to work with their shift working professionals coming off the night shift. You know, a lot of times I think when you talk to the people running the health fairs, they don't think anybody would be willing to come in at those times. And oftentimes we hear from the people running the course, uh, the running the events is, well, if they want to come in, they can come back. Think about it. You just got off your shift. It's your sleeping time. Are you going back to work to have your weight checked and maybe get a flu shot and talk to a health coach? You're not. I don't think they have ever come back. But yet, when I've gotten in there early, 
and I've set my table up and I've started having conversations, they'll show up because they want this. I've seen it with the toll booth workers. They were ecstatic to have something that the corporate offices get. So it's offering those solutions. And the next thing we could do is start using inclusive language when you're writing articles or you're putting out, you know, your social media. Think to yourself, is this something that a shift worker would be able to implement? Offer something for those shift workers to be able to implement. Because it's really important that we are inclusive and that we're including our shift workers in our message so that they have the ability to make healthy changes. And if you want to learn more, I do offer a continuing education course. It's three hours, three CEs, and we really go take a deep dive into working with shift workers, how we can be more inclusive in our language, discovering um, reasons why they are not making health changes and how we can better support that. So if you're interested, you can go to lauratimbrook.com, TY20, and you can go ahead and get $20 off the course. So I want to open up for some questions. I want to be mindful. I usually like to keep this session about 40 minutes. So um, we're at the 30-minute mark. So if any of you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. And um, we can have just kind of a Q&A session. 